I like to eat. I've got nowhere to go. All I've got is myself and a big piece of ice I called home. It sounds like bull to me, sir. Yes, sir. Do you know what it means to be lost? Really lost? I'm lost, if that means I know I'll never go back to live on Luna, but I know that Earth is still there to go back to, and I can't dream of going home. Eon, Alpha and the other refugees have no home to go back to. They can't even dream. They sat in that one ship that escaped and watched there. Moon turned into a ball of ice that would circle dead end. Frozen forever around its burned out star. A giant tomb that carried under its thick ice their homes and their shields and their loves. And they could not even hope and dream. Or I did not think they could. Dip me in mud, red boy. I'd give a prime contract for one gander at old face. He's blowing a gasket. I took two sub-commanders, wait till I hit that bullet head for ransom. Then we stopped laughing. We had won the battle, but Baldi was a crafty old soldier and his sabotage squad had wrecked our engines and our heating units. We were stuck on a frozen moon without heat. Beam for help and pray we don't freeze first. I was 22. Joe was the leader on our squad. He found the error when we had one ship ready. We had three days. No time to get the other ships ready. He said we were lucky the other planets didn't have even one ship ready. Not even time for United to help. Joe chose ten of us to go. I was one. At first I felt very good, you know? I was really happy until I found out that my dog couldn't go. Not fit enough. United had beamed the standards to us. Funny, how you don't think about other people until something hurts you. I then signed a year. I told them it was both of us or neither of us. I told Joe to tell United they couldn't break up a family and to hell with their standards. They left at me, not Joe, the council. What did they care? They would just take another man. My dog begged me to go. She cried so much I had to agree to go. I loved her too, much to be able to stay and see the look on her face as we both died. When she knew I could have gone on the ship before we took off I stood at a port and looked down at her, a small girl trying to smile at me. She waved once before they led her away from the rocket. All hell was shaking the planet already had been for months, but all I saw was a small girl waving once, just once. She's still here, somewhere down, there under the ice. Without her, without my home, I'm as dead as the moon I feel frozen. She's like that dead sun out there, and I'll circle around her until someone gets me and ends it. Alpha seemed to be seeing something. I'm beginning to forget what she looked like. I don't want to forget. I can't forget her on this planet. The way it was. It was a beautiful place. Perfect. I don't want to forget her. Showed up when we had just less than an hour to live. They took us off. The earth mining outfit haggled over the contract because the job had not been finished and I had to settle for two-third contract price. Central did better when he ran some two sub-commanders. It wasn't a bad deal and I would have been satisfied except that something had happened to Alpha. How many men? Yes, sir. Standard, sir. The party will pay. That's all. A guard contract. The hiring party just don't want any interference with their project. Two full companies? Forty men? They must expect to need a lot of protecting. I said, United opposes a lot of things. What's special about this scheme? I said, a hundred companies won't be enough. Alpha, have you ever seen or heard what a bomb can? Not weapons, peaceful power. I alerted Central and we took two squads and a small transporter and Alpha. 
directed us to a tall mountain that jutted a hundred feet above the ice of Nova Europa. I was not surprised. In a way I think I knew from the moment Alpha walked into my office. Whatever it was, Alpha was part of it. And I had a pretty good idea what it was. The only question was, how? But I didn't have time to think it out any farther. In the companies you learn to feel danger. The first fire caught four of my men. Then I was down on the ice. They were easy to see. Black uniforms with white wedges. Kino hair is white. Wedge company, company men. I don't like fighting other humans, but a job's a job and you don't ask questions in the companies. It looked like a full battalion against our two squads. On the smooth ice surface there was no cover except the jutting mountain top off to the right. And no light in the absolute darkness of a dead star. But we could see through our viewers and so could they. They outnumbered us ten to one. Central's voice came through the closed circuit. You call it. Break silence. But forty of our men were down already. Yeah. All of you, O'Hara's men, look at this. I saw it. In a beam of light on the top of that mountain it looked like a small pumping source machine. But it wasn't. It was a water beam. Projector. They went. They went fast and silent. And I knew where they were going. Not to the pump house. O'Hara would have taken one look at that machine and be halfway to United Center before he had stopped seeing it. I felt like taking that trip myself. But I had agreed to look and I would look. If we were lucky we would have 48 hours to look and run. I fell in what was left of my company behind the men that had saved us. More company uniforms than I had ever seen in one place. They said, nothing. Just walked into a hole in that mountain. Into a cave. An inch is the cave. At the far end, a door opened. An elevator. We followed the tall old man into the elevator and it began to descend. The elevator car went down for a long time. At last I could see a faint glow far below. The glow grew brighter and the car stopped. Far below the glow was still brighter. We all stepped out into a long corridor cut from solid rock. I estimated that we were at least 200 miles down, and the glow was hundreds of miles deeper. We went through three sealed doors and emerged into a vast room. A room bright with light and filled with more men in company uniforms, civilians, even women. At least a thousand. And I saw it. The thousand refugees, all of them. Gathered from all the companies, from wherever they had been in Rome City. Gathered here, in a room. Two hundred miles into the heart of their dead moon. A room filled with giant machines. Water machines. Highly advanced power. Reactors. I know the offense, Commander. And I know you. You're a fair man. You're a brave man. It doesn't matter where we got the power. Many men are dead to get it. But we have it, and we will keep it. We have a job to do. Why? You're insane. It can't. Central was laughing. That's the craziest damn dream I ever sat. Still for. You know what your chances of being picked up by another transporter are? Picked up just right. Why? It was so impossible I began to believe he was right. If you aren't caught just right. We could burn up or stay frozen and lifeless. We could drift in space forever as cold and dead as we are now. And our reactor power won't last forever. The forces we will use could blow the moon apart. But we are going to try. We would rather die than live as walking dead men in this perfect United Cities we do not want. Why not get council approval? All they care about is their damn sterile destiny. They don't care about people. Well, we do. We care about something to live for. The hell with the destiny of the cities they 
don't know and will be gone before they do know. They know plenty now. O'Hara's give them inches. Blast me, Red. It's so damn crazy I'm for it. Let's give it a shot. I did not know then how much it would really cost us. If I had, I might not have agreed. Or maybe I would have. It was good to know people could still have such dreams in our computer age. Okay, give the full companies and try to get one more. Alan's boys would be good. We'll split the fee three ways. Thank me later if we're still around. We give the companies and in 20 minutes they were on their way. Straight into the biggest trouble we had had since the War of Survival. I expected trouble, but I didn't know how much. Keith Glimso kicked me. Off. What? This place is empty. The whole damn moon out here is like a desert. Every company has moved out somewhere. Okay, get rolling fast. They came at dawn on the second day. We were deployed across five of the dead moons of Saturn in a ring around Nova Europa. They came fast and hard, and Joe and his men 